No, Dave's out. Dave's a good family. Who the f that tell us to stop? We could sit here all the goddamn night. That's the point. I gotta Staff go to dinner at six thirty with my dad. What time is it? Six thirty. No. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Born Broke with Mike Hoforth. Yeah, here we are today, and we have a great guest that has a great story for you, Justin Howard. What's up, guys? A.K.A. the Flaming Florist. Yes. From Flaming Flower Productions. Correct. Good friend. Yes. For a long time. Correct. Entrepreneur. 100%. Creative at heart. I would say so. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, you know, thanks for being here. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, since uh, we're on this beautiful set that. Uh, oh, I was going to mention this set is f rocking, bro. Oh, well, you're the, you're the creative eye. Oh, hey, stop. Justin. Hey. Yeah, I had a little say in it. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. It looks good. It, it, it it's inspirational. Well. I, you know, it's fun to sit here. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But you introduced uh, I, the dog? Tulip, but I don't know if you, you at home can see Tulip because well, she's of the cameras. Here. But she's sitting next to uh, Justin, she's, and Justin's right. She is my daughter. Yeah. The love of my life. Pitbull? She is a little Pitbull boxer mix. Nice. She was in prison for a year. Explain that. She was in a program called Pause for Life, oh. where she spent a year in prison with inmates mm -hmm. that trained her. She came to me with 48 commands. She's a separator dog. She's a service dog. She's an emotional support dog. But I kind of wanted her to just be a dog. So I kind of laid off the commands and all that. And uh, <clears throat> So like I said, we're here with Tulip today. <laughs> Just, Justin's, just, Justin's come for support. Well, I just wanted to let you guys know, I made most of my money off the dog. <laughs> Justin wasn't broke because he has Tulip. Uh, I, I love it. I love that's it. That's funny. No, she's a great, she's, she's like any dog lover would know. I love it. I love you know, it. They're very important. Well, hey, should we just dive into what we're here for? Or, yes. or, or, or I mean, I think so. I mean, it's your show. I'm just making sure I'm just we're here for you guys are ready. I'm like your emotional support guy. Oh, you're his tulip. I'm like, oh. I'm like your tulip. <laughs> if you want stroked, I'm definitely not. <laughs> no, I mean, I, just, say, I don't want to be stroked. Yeah, I'm not petting you. 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 But yeah, so Justin, let's let's roll it back. Let's roll it back to the beginning. Like, uh, tell us where you're from originally. Where'd you grow up? Um, tell us a little about your family. Do you have siblings? I was born in Van Nuys, California. Great. Not too far from here. Yeah. Um, raised in Sherman Oaks. Not too far from here. Um, and uh, I have one older brother. That's uh, my blood brother. I mean, I guess you say, I mean, I have two siblings, but one's a half brother, one's a full brother. Okay. Um, older, younger? One older, Jason, who's my... Um, Full brother, and then a younger half brother, Robert. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. I, what do you want to know? So you're from California, Southern California, born and raised, born and raised here. Yeah. Right native, out. Native, native. L.A. Basically. Yep. Yeah. Born do you raised. like L.A.? I hate it. You hate L.A. I hate to love it. I oh, love to hate okay, it. Okay, I was you say. know what I mean? Yeah, of course. No, of course. I mean it's my ground. It's my it's my home. I mean, I, I you know I'm one of those people that people laugh when they meet me because they're like, wait. You're a native. We don't meet very many natives. You know, why are you so cool? People in L.A. suck. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people from L.A. don't suck. You know, we, this is our home. This is where you all want to be. You know, you all want to come to our home. Um, you guys are the and we're the, we're the good people. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I, well, I never graduated from high school. Okay. Um, I went to Grant. Well, I went to, let's see, let's go back. I went to Sadaquay Elementary, mm -hmm. then I went to... Uh, Millican Junior High School, and then I got into high school. I went to Grant, and then I dropped out of Grant. Well, I ran away from home, I should say, when I was like fifteen. Why? I had conflicts with my father. You know, you just don't want to be told. Also, being gay and in the closet and dealing with all kinds of emotion, and you know, being bullied and all kinds of stuff through school. You just want to, you know. So you were sixteen. I was about 15, 16. 15, yeah, 16? 15, 16. Wow. But I wow. went and I went and ran off. I left home so far that I moved in with my best friend and who her her mother was my junior high school counselor. You know, moved into a great family. I mean, I stayed with okay. them for a while. And but at the time, I was supposed to be going to school, but I never went. I ditched, and um, you know, I had other things on my mind when I was. Excuse me. When I was thirteen, I uh, started doing flowers. So 
Oh, okay. Tell us about that. Well, when I okay, so <clears> let's well, how, how did you start doing flowers? Like you were in your front yard doing flowers? <laughs> what? Yeah. What's that like this, even mean? This little homo picking flowers through the garden. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, when I was 13, I, <laughs> I mean, were you in your front yard doing flowers? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Side yard. Side yard, front yard, dandelions. You backyard, know? guys. Come on. Oh, okay, Always cool. backyard. Hey. Um, yeah. No, I, uh, when I was 13, I went to a bat mitzvah, which is, you know, a celebration and a sure. ceremony where a Jewish girl turns into a woman. Mm-hmm. And it was my best friend, and she had this over-the-top bat mitzvah. I had never been to one. I would never experienced it. Grew up Jewish or part Jewish with my on my dad's side, so experienced like seder's and Passovers and Hanukkahs and but never like a bat mitzvah. Um, walked into the ballroom at the Mirabel Mirabel uh, Hilton in Santa Monica, and it was like this fantasy world. Oh wow! And I just was like, uh, open my mouth, my purse fell out. I mean, I threw my hands up, and I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, this is crazy. People pay money to have. Things so, transformed. so this was the time when you already knew you wanted to do this. I didn't. This is this is the day, the moment, going to this bat mitzvah that I was like, this is something. Is this really something that we can do and make money? Like, there's a company that oh. produces this. Sure, creates a fantasy land. So my mind just started going. You know, I hated reading. I hated school. I you know, but I had a creative mind. I knew where I wanted to. Go. I mean, I could live in fantasies sure. in my own mind. So I was like, this is cool. As and um, I started working for that company. Her, it was her aunt's company. Okay. Worked for her aunt's company and starting the next day by scrubbing buckets and cleaning stuff and taking things down. You took like Christmas lights and you'd wrap them, but you had to wrap them a certain way. Each light to each light. And then, you know, so there, it was crazy. So you started from the bottom. Very bottom. You, 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 no perks because <laughs> they knew you. No, no. You're, no. You, they put you right into scrubbing started buckets. Started like five bucks an hour, you know, <clears throat> wow. working for, you know, Woo. doing shit. Work. But you loved it. Of course. You know, at yeah. that point, I, you know, and it was then, maybe a, a year or two into that, yeah. um, that I was like, you know what? I want to, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to work in this industry. This is cool. Okay. Um, so how long did you stay there before you oh, decided to make years. a change? 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I worked for them. Wow. Well, I dropped out of school. Yeah. And I would go, like, so fortunately, they lived like two blocks away from my high school. Okay. So I would say, oh, I'm going to school. And I'd go over there and I'd go to work, you know? Okay. It would be glittering or gluing or making poofs, what we call them, you know, for centerpieces. I mean, it was all kinds of... This. Are the poofs, are they? Are those those green things you put the vlog no, on? No, 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 that's oh. Oasis. These were oh. just like for bat mitzvah arrangements. Like, oh, okay. You okay. twist like boil paper and put a pick on it and then put it all into a styrofoam oh. and it'd make a centerpiece. You know, we, we would just do tons of stuff. Cool. Did a lot of balloons and, you know, back then the balloon arches and things like that were big. Not like they do now, but... Like animal shapes? Or? No. <laughs> but I was, just let's go back <laughs> even further. That kind of takes us in. It's a funny story. Okay. I was, uh, when I was like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight, I used to dress up as a clown. No. And sell balloons at the swap meet. That is not a shocker. Seven? I'm not shocked. <laughs> seven, not or shocked seven or eight? Seven or eight? Well, so my mom would sell, my mom would sell, she made clocks. She would get baskets and put those little battery battery packs on the back and glue the numbers on the foot and put the little hands and she'd make clocks. And I used to help her make those at home. And then my stepfather would sell socks. Okay. Two socks, knee socks, high socks, blah, 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 all kinds of socks. So when, remember when swap meets were huge? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. even it was big for everybody. I'm everybody. from Florida, so. Okay, everybody would go to the swap meet. And, um, and then I was like, well, how do I make money? I wanna make money, I don't wanna just stand here. So my mom <laughs> dressed me up as a clown. And I would hold balloons and sell them for a buck a piece. Sounds like a dream job. I mean, I I don't, I'm not sure how I, I'm not sure if it me up royally or if it made me like an entrepreneur. (laughs) I'm not quite sure. Because I I don't know if it was like, was I happy selling clown? Like, I I don't know. But it was definitely a step in life, like, in along the lines of entertainment. And, you know, I mean, because I would entertain the little kids. I love kids. Yeah. I've got 13 godchildren of my own. Wow. So it was, you know, I think it was just a segue into that. Like, so you went, you were a clown. <laughs> nice way to put it, Mike. <laughs> you moved your career from a clown. Yes. Selling balloons. <laughs> to parties. Yeah. And scrubbing buckets. Yeah. Okay. You spent 10 years there. Pretty approximately. much. Approximately. I mean, yeah. Or and where'd less. you go from there? I mean, I started doing things. On, well, so I, I mean, I waited tables. I worked at Chin Chin's. I worked okay. at Jerry's Deli. Okay. Um, you know, I did accounting on films. Okay. I was an assistant accountant. How old were you? 
I was probably in my twenties, my mid twenties. Okay, you know, so the math 20s. is adding up. I mean, see, yeah, I'm just so it's just for the of, viewers. Yeah. I'm trying to, you know, yeah. we, we have to. We're walking them through this thing. So, Got it. so you're 14, 15, 16, Then you were there for doing ten flowers, years. So you're twenty five. But I never stopped doing flowers. So you're always doing. Like when flowers. I was like nineteen, I was working at Jerry's Deli. Had moved out on my own. Okay, I lived okay. in a little less, in a little apartment in West Hollywood. Okay. Going doing. I, was, I remember filling my bathtub in this little one bedroom apartment. And when I say tiny, it was small. It was above a dog kennel, so there was dogs barking all night long. But it was only like 300 bucks a month. Okay, okay. So that just goes to show everybody how old I am. Did you have a budget? What do you mean? At this time, had you made a budget and figured out oh, how I didn't to... even know what budget meant. Oh, okay. I mean, you know. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, I point. just was a money maker. Well, here's like, what here's I what's happening. I was a money, money maker. I didn't care. Like, I, so I worked at Jerry's. I was making $300 a day. Okay. Well, that I knew I could pay my rent. You okay. know I mean? I, I was smart, but not educated. Okay. Is that even good to say about yourself? Well, no. You you, <laughs> you, you were smart yeah, enough to you. know you were smart yeah. enough to know that you could make money, and in yes. your head you knew what you were spending. Yes, yes. So, I so you knew, knew if you were knew positive if I was or negative. Money. Yeah, I knew. I mean, you know, yeah. you want to go out and spend three hundred dollars. You knew you could spend three hundred dollars. You're making it again tomorrow. Yeah, you're keeping it really simple. Simple. It was simple. very simple. Very simple. But I remember doing flowers, like filling my bathtub in this apartment, and then putting all the flowers in there, doing like friends' weddings. Okay. You know, and making a thousand dollars. Well, now you're making it what? Like now I'm starting to do things on my own. You starting know? to scale. Yeah, you know, because I got into an argument with the people I was working with that taught me everything. You know, at one point I was, you know, when you get fed up. Is it the bar mitzvah? Yes, the bar mitzvah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But when you get fed up, you're like, finally, you know, I'm, I mean, you get to a point where you've been mentored. Yeah. And you're thankful and you're grateful, but you're like, F- it, you guys are a mess. I need to work on my own. I need, I can do this on my own. Right. Kind of got right, to right, that right. point and you kind of. This is somehow, the entrepreneur coming out. Yes, yeah, somehow subliminally, we don't want a f- relationship, but you end up blowing up one day and it just destroys it for a little while. I mean, we're close now again, but right. you know, right, right, right. So it was that stepping stone. It's always a difficult thing to to break away. Hundred percent, because everyone you feel people loyal. have feelings. Well, now you're loyal. Yes. they're upset. Yes, there's a like it's just it gets weird. Yeah, and nowadays, I mean, just as we all know. All you viewers out there, everyone's <laughs> entitled and no one has any loyalty. Well, yeah. They'll stab you in the back in a second, so be careful. Um, but yeah, I went from uh, doing flowers in my house, my little apartment, waiting tables during the day. Then while I was waiting tables, I got the opportunity to do accounting because, you know, and then it was like, you, I mean, you guys are in the, you're in the industry. You guys yeah. know. It was yeah, like, yeah. what? You can make 1750 a week, you know, and go to an office job and work. It was torture. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was fucking I hear torture. Um, I didn't, you know, but you're still night, you're just, still doing flowers at the time. 100. So you still doing never flowers. stopped doing flowers. Never stopped doing flowers because there was a passion there. 100. percent I mean, well, I knew that that was going to be my a career. fire a passion. Well, I knew that I was good. I knew that I had it in me. So let me take, go back a little bit and tell you a story. So when I was working for the company, I had said to um, the owner, I said, you know, I want to do flowers. I said, I'm sick of doing scrubbing buckets. I'm sick of the flower. The designers make fifteen, twenty dollars an hour, and I'm making five. She was like, well, not everybody's a designer, honey. Like, you can't just. So I went, and she goes, well, here, let me give you some flowers in a bowl and see what you can do. And I, like, went, and I broke the face with a hammer, and I put slivers of glass into the stems and put them into the water, and it illuminated. She was like, oh, no, 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 you're an artist. You're not a florist. <laughs> so I knew I had something at that point. You right. Know? You were I mean, different. Something different. Thinking, I was thinking. You're out, so beyond doing flower arrangements. Yes. I was right. thinking out of the box at the right, point right, right. when people weren't even saying that term, think out of the box. You know, Mm -hmm. I was already out of the box. Right, 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 right. I was never in a box. (laughs) Gotcha, gotcha. Um, And so I went from from Jerry's Deli to accounting to then, you know, I was got the opportunity when I was probably in my late 20s to um, open a flower shop, an orchid shop and a flower shop with some people that I had met through a friend. Okay. And um, it was on Melrose, Right near Maxfields, if anybody's familiar, one of the most high end stores you could ever shop at. Right, right. Um, I think a lot of people know Melrose Avenue. Yes. Well, yeah. this is Melrose, like right in the, before it get, becomes Beverly Hills. Sure. Trendy as it can be. I mean, you know. And I started working there. I opened the shop with these people and um, I started making arrangements and putting them in the windows and putting them on the shelves. And people started coming in and they're like, who's the designer? And. I found out, you know, people from other flower shops were coming by and taking pictures and stealing my ideas. And oh, wow. I wasn't, I didn't have a clientele yet. I was, you know, just this kid, not kid, but, you know, guy doing flowers, creating what, it, what was in his head and didn't realize it was so cutthroat. And so were, were you a part there. owner of this? Uh, I wasn't part owner, but I was, I was, I was 
I ran the place, and I mean, I like to say that I was part owner. Gotcha. But when it really all came down to it, no, invest wise, I wasn't. Gotcha. Um, okay. And um, it, it lasted a while, and you know, it was good, and I built a clientele, and I got my name known. I mean, Obviously, people are coming in taking pictures, stealing your ideas. Yeah, but that's it. I didn't know that they were sending like other designers from other floral shops around. Mm -hmm. that, to this day, they're no longer around. <laughs> um, <laughs> would send their their workers in to take pictures, and I didn't know. But then I, you know, somebody had once told me, "Oh, do you know, like we did, there was a picture when we worked at such and such floral shop of your work that we had to copy," and I was like, "What?" So throughout this process, did you have a mentor? Did you look up to somebody? Was this all just coming out of oh, your I mean, head? There's, there's a woman, Jane, who taught me everything I know about flowers. Okay. That was that was the aunt okay. of my best friend. I mean, so she, she was, was your mentor. She was definitely my mentor. I mean, okay. she definitely you know took me under her wing and taught me. Okay. But and I like to say this. I mean, she's my she was everything to me. But I also like to say that I wanted it. Yeah. So you can have all the mentors in the world, but if you don't want it inside, a mentor does you no good. Right. Because they're just going to tell you. I mean, they'll take you under their wing, but if you don't, well, how do you know when passion, you want it? I mean, that's yeah, that's you have to find that inside yourself. And that's a passion, right? Yeah, I mean, and I just knew because I knew that I enjoyed doing these. I knew that I could create and that I could make these magical looking things out of flowers, <clears> and I knew that that was what I wanted to do. Right, and all along the way, like and you there said, was money involved. You never stopped doing flowers, nope. whether you're doing accounting or you're nope. waiting tables. Oh, I would do accounting on a film, and then I would do like. The, the, the production coordinator's wedding and I would do, right, you know, right. flower arrangements for Mother's Day for all of the people. I would do, you know, I mean, yeah, I was always, I was always hustling. That's awesome. It's That's called awesome. the hustle. Do you think that hustle is required to get you ahead in life? A hundred percent. If you have no hustle, then you get nowhere. Okay. Unless you're born with it. Okay. Born <laughs> with hustle? No, unless you're born with it. Not being broke. Mm. Oh, that's then you don't need a hustle. I mean, you know, you're here, you're spoon Yeah, but I, yeah, but at the same time, I think that you, even if you're born with money, yeah, you could still be successful. No, a hundred percent. But I'm just you were saying, are you born with a hustle? Yeah, you could still be successful. and You still have that hustle. Hundred percent. But I just the hustle when you come like your show says, born broke. Right. When you're born broke, and you don't have that. Right. The hustle's real, and, and it comes within, and, and it, it's it, possible. Well, it's definitely possible, but it's also. Um, it's it's rewarding. Anybody who hustles and makes it on their own, yeah, there's a feeling that you can't get when you were born with it. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's actually a mar like a our old coach when I was at Pepperdine. It, it said life has a special taste mm -hmm. for people that work for it. Yep, and that's just true, right? It's like 100. Like when you get something easy, when you like somebody gives you a gig that you didn't earn, you're like, yeah, I did the gig, I made my money. But if you were pursuing this person and then finally and then you get them to call you back and you worked on that person for six months yep. and then like yeah you can do my you can do the gig all of a sudden 100 percent. that deal where it feels so good it's like yeah, when you know. buy when you buy your first pair of shoes right <laughs> on your own with your own money right and yeah. it's a pair you want Woo! i mean you yeah. know you get to make all the choices yeah you don't have somebody telling you no that's not going to work for pe sure. and to walk to school both hills up you know, yeah. both ways up hill in the sure. snow. That's not going to work. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, when you work for things, it's gratifying. Absolutely. So now you, now you have this place on Melrose and you're in, and people are taking pictures of your stuff, but you don't really know that's yeah. happening. And, um, and where I, do we go? I mean, it was great. It was great. I'm making tons of money, you know, having a great time, having a great life. Um, it was awesome. I mean, you know, um, are you, st are you they, still there today? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. no, they ran out of money and, you know, we had to close the store and okay. I was able to take from there. I went to another company and rented space from them, became their creative director and uh, also rented space to do my own thing. Tell me what, a, what's a creative director? I mean, like, I, what's, I, should what's say, I should say creative director. I was their floral, you know, floral director. I did all oh, of their flowers, okay, okay. all of their, you know, their jobs. Right, um, right, right, right. Okay. And was doing my own jobs on the side, still hustling. Nice. So, so I was renting hustles. space. Renting space from yeah. them, doing their stuff, doing my stuff, you know, made it up, came up, and that was probably for a good ten years. Why were you why were you doing so much work? Why didn't you just do one job? Because you don't ever pass up on anything when you're hustling. Oh, gotcha. You know, you never know when you're gonna you know, I mean you want everything. Got it. I did. I wanted everything. I mean I, I not everything, but I just I enjoyed working too. I wanted to spread my creative, you know, mm -hmm. spread my creations and Show everybody my magic. All right. So you're hustling. So you have a job. You have a side hustle. Yep. You're still hustling. And then finally, it just, you know, that, that, that job with that company faded. 
they wanted to go a different direction. You know, they wanted to everybody to be in house, and I was doing bigger things and working for doing bigger jobs on my own, and had landed a, a really big job with a network that you know paid a lot of money, and I made my first big chunk, first big two hundred thousand dollar profit chunk. Nice. You know? And I mean, I was nice. like, with this is, with that money, I moved out of that space and got a warehouse and of your own. Yes. Okay. Of my own, and from that point on, started to produce events. Do you ever fall on hard times? Of course. I mean, we all fall on hard times, but I mean, I struggled with drugs. I struggled, you know, with loneliness, depression. I mean, suicide, all of it. But you've overcome it all because yeah. you're here. I'm here. You're doing some of the biggest stuff in Hollywood. Yep. Netflix stuff, Oscar stuff. Yep. Celebrity stuff. Yep. But it takes a soldier to survive that stuff. You know, I mean, God, I believe, puts soldiers on the planet and he puts peons and other people and people to do nothing and people to help the soldiers be soldiers and you know you have to want you know i mean i don't i never i wanted to die i just wasn't happy if that makes sense you know i mean i did drugs to mask the massive unhappiness that the success brought me gotcha why did the success bring you massive unhappiness? Because when you're not happy inside, no matter no matter amount no amount of money can make you happy. And when you're at everyone's back in call, when you you know you guys understand when you're up there and everybody wants you and everybody's poking at you and everybody's prying for you and everybody's calling for you because they need you and you and you and you and you know you're the the creative of the company and they want you there you know and it's like why do I have to be there when I have 15 employees I'm on salary. Right There's, now, you know, speaking of employees, like how did you? I mean, I'm just perplexed. How did you learn to be a business owner? I don't. I don't think I ever learned. I think I'm still a horrible business owner. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. At least he's I, honest. I don't know that I could, honestly, but, but how many people? Like, there's a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because you're not. I mean, you're not taught how to be a business owner. You know, I mean, I'm smart with my money. I'm smart with my choices. I know how to entertain clients. I know how to generate money. I know how to make money off of my craft. Right. But, but as a business owner, I, I, I'm too, I want to say I have too, bit, too big of a heart, too soft hearted. I mean, I want to do good for everybody. I don't, you know, so you treat your employees like family and then they f over and then you want to do drugs and mask your unhappy. You know I mean? It's just, it's so, sick and twisted. So has everything been an upward ride? Since you started, no. everything you've shared with us, it's been, it's just been a crescendo. Oh, I would say building. more. I would say more building, of a building, roller coaster building. and up and down and up and yeah, down and yeah. up and down and up yeah. and down. So how do you, you so know, the not. ups are always, I presume the ups are always fun and, and fun to deal with and all that kind of stuff. But like when you go down to the down part of the roller coaster, like how do you ever dig yourself out of that mindset? Like well, give us an example like, of a down, a down, a downward segue in in your business or a downward segue i don't know that career. it was ever a downward segue in the business it was more in my mental state of mind it wasn't oh it was a mental thing yeah i mean it was okay. drugs it was it. you know you're lonely okay I, I mean i recently about two years ago lost 170 pounds oh wow. i was you know three congratulations thank you i was 350 pounds i was a fat gay male in hollywood that doesn't work right unless you have money then you can be a fat gay male mm. with money because then people love you because they want your money so you've pacified that need for love and want from other people. Right. But they really just want your money. They just want the money. Yeah. I mean. No, yeah. it's hard. It's hard. And it was emotionally, you know. Right. Stressful and distressful. And I, you know, looked to cocaine and did a lot of it. Lots and lots of it. To where it was fucking with. To where it ended up finally saying, you know, you need to stop doing this shit if you want to continue to be in this industry and, and have a, and be respected. Sure. Sure. You know, a lot of people. A lot of people walked away from me, and a lot of people, you know, which was fine. I'd be dead if they did it. If right. everybody would have kept giving me exactly what was going on, there would have been a day that you walked in and found me dead on my bathroom floor. Whew. Well, thank God we haven't. I here agree. we are. I agree. I agree. I'm glad I'm, we're here today. I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> I'm happy for you to be here. I'm sure George is happy for you to be here. George, have that's you ever a, done that's, flowers? That's a heavy story. Yeah, yeah, it is. But that's, you but know I, what? Most of, our, most of our stories are heavy, and a lot of people are right. scared to them right but if we don't start telling our stories 
we're gonna everybody's gonna think that life is that easy mm -hmm. just learn how to use a cell phone learn how to film yourself and get yourself a lot of followers and you'll be rich for the rest of your life right. well you heard it here there you go <laughs> but i mean it takes work yeah. It, it, takes work. it takes work. It, it takes, takes sacrifice. It takes support. Yeah. It takes all these things. I mean, people that are listening today or watching us today, like what, what kind of advice would you give them okay, who are trying to start to be an entrepreneur or who are trying to get ahead in their finances or who are trying to get clients or who are trying to I mean, experience and grow their creativity? I mean, what I would say is, you know, be true to yourself, love yourself, be good to others, be kind. And don't disrespect people that are trying to give you help, mm. you know, and take the help. You don't know everything. You don't, I swear, you can't Google everything in the world. You can't Google every lesson. Sure. You can't say, how do I deal with an employee? I mean, you can, but you can't get the, you know, you got to take, take the step back. Don't think that you need everything at once either. So patience. Patience is a virtue. What do you think about listening? Being I a hate, good listener. I hate listening. You hate being a listener? I, I hate listening. <laughs> you hate listen. <laughs> I like to be listened to. Uh, no. Um, you have to listen. You have to listen to everything. I mean, there's something good out of everything. You probably take a good lesson out of anybody, you know, talking to your grandma, talking to the old man at the bus stop, talking to anybody. I mean, there's a lesson learned everywhere, I think. If, you know, from a financial standpoint, yes. through your journey, yeah. right? What, what would be your advice as far as, like, finances or, you know? Save money, invest money, because it can disappear. But if you're invested and you have some saved in a nest egg, you'll, you'll be okay. And I did the opposite. I flew private jets, took everybody on trips, spent thousands and thousands of dollars on strippers. And I'm talking about female strippers, even though I'm gay. I, I mean, you, you <laughs> spent a lot of money when I had it. And when, I, when it all went, I mean, I never didn't have money because I did save or had, but, you know, I knew when I was going to be broke um it was never broke but i would you know get down to that minimum where you're like oh, i got about a year in the bank you know always make sure you just you know you you are smart about your money you know make sure that you know that it's it, it can go away at some point what would be the commonality in in in, in trying to make sure you have money okay so what do you mean like, what would be a common thing to make sure you have money in life? I, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to explain that. Hustle? Either. Yeah, you hustle. I mean, Side hustle? Listen, you know what? And you're never too good to do anything. Right. If, oh. you're, if, you're, if you're down and you don't have money, a job at Starbucks pays 20 bucks an hour. <laughs> That's key. Don't be too hooking on, That's... you know, too, too much to say, I can go get a job there. I mean, I always That's said, huge. I always said, if, if, my clients don't come back. Or if I, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I'll go work. I'll go wait tables again. I mean, I got a personality that's great. I can make money waiting tables. Do I want to? No. But you got to always not be too good for anything. No I, I, ego. Yeah. Yep. Take yep. the ego and just. A hundred percent. You know, work for whoever you got to. I mean, I, sure. when I was, here's a story. When I was going through stuff and I kind of lost, not lost my clients, but kind of got, took a back. I took a year off before the pandemic. I took mm -hmm. a year off and I was like, you know what, you're gonna find yourself again, Justin. You don't need to deal with clients, like, it's just too much for you, you know, you, you, it's hard to handle. And I, uh, I mean, I'd go work for other designers and help them at 20 bucks an hour. I'm worth 3,000 an hour, you know, my brain. Right. My speed, my right. knowledge. But you you're know? taking $20 an hour. I was doing hour. it because I just needed to, you know, still make some money, pay those bills. I, I, I have a story similar. Yeah. I have a story similar. Fell on hard times in business. Yeah. Had an employee who had a family, two kids. I went and took a valet job. Yeah. So I could come off salary and keep him on. So, see. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Business yeah. owner with employees. Yeah. I went to valet at night. Yeah, to keep him to on. To keep him on salary. To, you didn't have to wreck his family. That's like, correct. Let him go. Same difference. Mm. Yeah, it's the same thing, you know? I mean, and I'll just, tell you, it's a punch in the gut. It's a punch in the gut. Yeah, it is. But you have to. But some people can do it, you know? And some yeah. people can't. That's right. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, I mean, <laughs> I had so much money in the bank. Um, I don't know what these side hustles you guys are talking about. <laughs> no, no, no. But in all honesty, I, I, I drove Uber. Yeah. I drove Uber to oh, make extra wow. money. You I remember, remember that? that. And then I came to work for you. Yeah, I remember loading, that. Loading uh, tables yes. and chairs and delivering stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and it was so funny. I got like the biggest compliment from one of my, some, somebody in my family. 
they were like, I can't believe you're driving Uber and I can't believe you're like delivering tables in a delivery truck. I'm like, I have a family. Like, yeah. like I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and again, back you have to the, to. the I mean, ego. Who cares? Just do the, the work. That's the only way you're going to be. <laughs> yeah. So there is somebody, and I'm not going to say names, but there's somebody that I know who is a major, major force in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And someone once told him, if you stay humble, your staircase will always go up. There will never oh, be a down. Beautiful. Wow. And that's what I've, I've, when I heard that, I said, that's how you have to be. So, you know, it might not be, it might be bad, but mm -hmm. your staircase is still going up. There's sure. never a down. So. Sure. Right, right, right. Just stay right. humble and, right. you know, roll with the punches and take them right. Don't get in, you know, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's why I, I that fly that's... Spirit <laughs> Airlines. It keeps me so <laughs> humble. Well, I don't you. know about that. First yeah. class or nothing. I know. This might um, be my last flight. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like where you're going with a lot of this conversation. Uh, you know, there's some really good gems in what you said, you know, Aww. treating people. It's all it's uh, uh, nice. If you you're know, not, if you don't treat people the humble, way you want to be treated, hustle, then you'll never get you side know. hustle. Not all crying, by the way. I was gonna say, are you? Are, are we getting teary? <laughs> get we're emotional. getting emotional. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. we're getting can, emotional. Can I, can I pick like one little gem that I? Yeah, yes. That hurt. So, um, I think uh, everybody stays in that nine to five grind, and they're kind of. And we talked about this. Like they say, like most people, or I think the quote was, "Most men live a live a life of quiet desperation. They're just like <laughs> trying to." They're like, I'll do the nine to fiver and maybe I'll go drink with my buddies or do whatever, but they never break out. And then what you said is like, yeah, you got to find your passion. And then Mike's like, well, how do you find that? And you responded and it hit home with me where you said, that's for you to figure out. That's not for your mentor mm -mm. to figure out. But once you find that and then you find the mentor, it's like magic. Yes. Because I've found mentors before in my life. Uh -huh. And they were mentoring me. And like you said, I was, I was wasting their time yeah. because I was like, I got like a bunch of knowledge, yep. but I was half cocked. Yep. I wasn't, I wasn't, do, and I was wasting his time. Total sense. You know, I don't think it was a waste and, of time. I don't think anything's ever, you were wasting, you weren't wasting. He was mentoring you because he had a passion to mentor. Sure. So maybe he wasn't wasting, yeah. you weren't wasting his time. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't investing his time in the right person. Correct. Like you know I, mean? I was getting <laughs> skills. Same kind of thing. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like I was getting skills. But for you to be able to admit that now. Sure. It's huge. Oh yeah. You know, and that's a good thing to tell our viewers mm -hmm. or your viewers. Our viewers. Become my viewers. Yeah. Um, our viewers. <laughs> all our of viewers. our viewers. Yeah. Is that. We all have a different path, too. Absolutely. You know? I mean, we all have to go a different way. Mm -hmm. It's a different path, a different situation. You can never become somebody that's already become. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right? But right. I mean, you can be something like them, but yeah. there's not going to be another Oprah in mm -hmm. this world. Sure. There'll be another talk show host or another mm -hmm. mogul, mm -hmm. but there'll never be another Oprah. You can't hope yeah. to be Oprah. Yeah. No. Isn't it, isn't it pretty interesting, though, when you, when you meet, like... I know, like, Mike, because he's so magical when he when he builds these businesses that he's built. And it's like, he's not, everybody's like, oh, Mike, Mike really grinds and Mike really works really hard. <laughs> he does it because this is what he wants to do. Yes. Same thing with you. Like, yep. like Michael Jordan, do you think he's really working hard? No, he freaking loves basketball. Yeah. That's yep. a good point, and George. it's not work yeah. for him. That's a good point. You know? I mean. You know? It's not, it's not, yeah. Well, I mean, and I agree. I agree. But when it. When it comes down to it, it is work. And like I say, and this is going to say something to all of our viewers that are younger, that are millennials, that do, you know, YouTube and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I liked, I would say a couple of years ago, I'd be like, F all of them. They don't know how to get their hands dirty. They sit behind a camera. They do this. And <laughs> here we are. And we know now this sure. shit work right it does take passion it mm -hmm. does take drive they have to have skills mm -hmm. to build a million followers two million followers three sure. million 30 million followers mm -hmm. it doesn't come easy sure you got to be consistent you got to stay on your game mm -hmm. you got to be every day doing creating content I and mean, that's hard mm -hmm. shit. oh yeah it is mm -hmm. persistence persistence is key persistence and anything we do period you can't be successful if you say one day I want to be a florist and the next day I want to be, you know, I want to yeah. be a director and the next day I want to be this. I mean, you have sure. to be successful at one thing first, I believe, to branch out and do other things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be here today if if I didn't stay the course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about money and, and being being financially responsible and, you know, financial literacy for those that, you know, that weren't taught. Yeah. You know, which is what? 
<laughs> all of Pretty us. Pretty much everybody. <laughs> all of us. I've yeah, never met yeah. people that know, like, oh, yeah, my dad taught me everything about Well, I'm going to tell you something. That, that. I'm going to tell you something that you know? I don't know how we're going to teach the, the next generation or all of this, but I still write checks. Mm-hmm. I still have a checkbook. Right. When you write a check and you balance your own bank account, it teaches you about money. It teaches you how much you have, what's going out, when it's going out. If I send a check out today, that money's going to be gone in three days once it goes through the mail and gets to the place and they cash that check. It teaches you where that money goes. Nowadays, everybody just has auto pay and they don't look at their bank accounts. It's just money just goes out. It's yeah. crazy. I can't believe that it's that way. <laughs> technology. <laughs> call me. I mean, technology, but is it really technology? Or is it a way? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been on my bank account and found businesses or places that have taken my money twice or three, you know, but people don't look at their, they don't know how to balance. That's a good, good lesson. They, yeah. You have to look at your statements. You have to look at your statements. You have to look at your statements because maybe they're not doing it on purpose, but this but automated system, 100%. you can pull twice. It can pull three times and, and you and won't you even see it. you never know about a fraud out there and all kinds of stuff that goes on, you know? Right. I mean, you got to watch your money. I like it. We talk about the basics. Yeah. Like bringing it all the basics in the budgeting world. Like we said, get out a piece of paper and a pen. Yes. Nobody writes with papers and pens anymore. Yeah. They I get I, I have like a dinosaur. I, like, so, I had a notepad at our convention. I just went to everybody's like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, it's my chicken scratch, man. So That's I cool. walked into a meeting not too long ago. I'm, I have a new business adventure with some new partners. Mm-hmm. We walked in and they walked in with laptops and I walked in with a steno pad. <laughs> and I was like, and she, one of my partners looked at me and she goes, I love you. She's like, you're out of control. You still write your note. I said, 100%. I can't say that I don't. I do. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at my desk, if you looked at my desk, yeah. I I have notes written on every <laughs> napkin, yeah. sticky note, piece to. of paper. Guys, we're old now. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, but I think, but it's not even old. It's, it's the way. Okay, we can't reinvent the world. One day when the internet goes down and you can't access sure. your good point. For I, I still have on notes. Well, so my business is going to continue. Yours is going to crash. But I think I also do think I feel, that I mean, you, I'm also just, you touched on it a little bit. I do think that when you physically have to write it out, <sighs> it sticks in your yes. brain and it that. affects yes. your I agree with that. Especially well, it goes when back it, like, to like when people skills, say like oh, typing I can't do for shit. When it goes back to when people say, you know, if you're in an, a disagreement or an argument with somebody, write them a letter and it takes it It'll take it out of you. You know, mm-hmm. you'll feel mm-hmm. complete. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, like, yeah it's yeah, the yeah. same thing with writing well, your business. Right, writing right. it down. You know, you remember. I shop off lists still. I watch all these people downtown who shop you for flowers, and they have their phones out or their iPads out, and that's you know. And I'm sitting there flipping pages, <laughs> you know, <just> throwing <laughs> right out. You know, people hey. think I'm a dinosaur. Yeah. Hey, it works. Hey, Look, hey. you're successful. Yep. You drive nice vehicles. You live in a great place. Yep. You live a fantastic life. Yep. You do what you want when you want. Yep. But like I said, but we can say all of that, and I just want everybody out there to know that no matter what you have, you have to have peace within yourself, love yourself, love everybody that's around you, mm. and just make sure that you, you know, you're grateful for everybody. It doesn't just, it, the money is not it. Mm-hmm. We're going to teach you here on Bro and Broke how to make money and juggle your finances, but... If you can't juggle your emotions and your mental health, then you, you're going to be A hundred percent. You know? I, so. A million percent. Yeah. And I just, you know, I think we've all gone through that. And I think everybody has. It's a common thing. Yeah. It it's is easy. Common. It is common. And I think that you're going to see it more and more on every show, whether it be a financial show or a how-to show or a makeup show or anything. You know, if you're not mentally stable, if we're not mentally stable, then we're not going to get anywhere. Right. Mm. You have to love yourself first. That's it. Love yourself first. Wow. I, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you say that. Like, have you ever? I got I got. I'll find the name of the book and, and I'll send it to you both, you guys, and send it back to myself because I. Wait, but you I, read a book? You, uh, rarely, <laughs> an audio book. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm massively dyslexic, by the way. So thanks, you make me feel really worse. You make me feel. Oh, worse. That was so. Weird. So basically, what this lady it was, she wrote like a, uh, all these all these stories that she worked while she was at a hospice, and all these people are. Obviously, they're on death's door, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and what they explained was that, you know, um, they all come back and they say, you know, oh, yeah, I, I, they, no one ever says I should have worked more uh-huh. or I should have grinded more. All of them are like, 
I, I always had a dream of like playing an instrument or oh. something. So they'll bring them an instrument and that person's like supposed to die in like a month and they end up living another year because oh, wow. the, the nurse brought them a, whatever, a, a guitar or uh, something. Right. And then, um, and then somebody's like, I always wanted to learn, uh, you know, how to write poetry or whatever their dream was. Cause they never did it. They were always chasing money back to your point. They never followed their passion. Yep. Their, their dad wanted them to be a banker. Yeah. So they were a banker <laughs> and they have a, a house in Malibu and yep. a house in there and a Bentley and, and all these types of things. But they never, the person just wanted to be in a, a folk band and play yeah. the guitar and they never got to do that. And now they get it. to do it. Yep. It's and it's so, so if you find like your pat and, and I can tell you're an artist through and through. Thank you. And, and then like all of a sudden you're at the top of the game. And everything's magical, right? Like, and, and if you're not, imagine not following your passion, and then you're just grinding. Because I've done it. And there's millions of people. I mean, you can watch even shows like I mean, I just watch. Yeah. You watching Bridget? I watch Bridget, and I'm obsessed. Yeah. But like those women had to marry men that they didn't even know. Mm -hmm. They don't get to follow their path, you know. Yeah. It happened back in the day, and it happens still now. People are you, you. You get something in your head, and you think this is what I've got to do. This is who I have to be, mm -hmm. and this is what I'm going to do. You know. I mean, I think our society is well accepting of all kinds of new paths and new ways to do mm -hmm. things. I mean, with our LGBTQ community, with everything. I mean, it's all opening doors for people to be exactly who they want to be. Right, right, right. But people have to realize that you can't just be who you want to be and make it. Mm -hmm. You have to be who you want to be, have passion, be smart, and hustle. But you did it smart, right? You, like, you, 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 you don't just... Wow, I want to be a force and just go do it and take out a big loan and then go in debt. Never you, took you, a loan. Never. You did, you, yeah. you did the side hustle. Well, you started from the bottom. Bottom yeah. and came up. He, Some he, people he, walk right into the top. Same thing as you. Well, yeah, that's a, that's one. That's something I would say is, yeah. is something that's very crucial to becoming successful, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just going to pick your passion and become successful the guy, yeah, like you world, you, you gotta yeah. start yeah. you gotta grind you have to start at the bottom 100 percent. that's how you get your chops that's how you get your stripes well those yeah. are the people that succeed yeah i mean those people that start at the top will succeed for a while mm -hmm. but they'll be taken over by somebody that's smarter get exposed that, yeah get, what get about exposed or, what yeah. about naysayers the f people Hater. that people that are hating or, or they're they're negative or they tell you you can't do something those are people that just are unhappy those yeah but people that inside they can't do it and they don't know how to should do we it. listen to them no. Why? Why would you listen to them? I don't know. It's easy to do. No. It's, it's a roadblock. Fool you? No, no, no. I mean, you just if, block it out. Some people like the hate. Listen, I don't care them. what people say. You but have it, to it, grow. You have to grow. You have to love yourself. When you love yourself and you believe in yourself, somebody can tell you that you're the ugliest, mm -hmm. most untalented person in the world, and it will not bother you one, one bit. Right. Mm -hmm. People have told me you're a drug addict, you're a mess, you're a f disaster. You know what? I, maybe I was, or maybe I am at that point. But mm -hmm. I know you're not going to destroy me. You're not going to beat me down. I'm a genius at what I do. Mm -hmm. Confidence, a hundred percent. Confidence. But love. there's people that need that need those boosts, and there's people that it comes naturally because you know what you're doing is right. Right. That's it. Believe in yourself. Always. Perfect. And how do you get there? Right. Everybody, like you know, you know, when uh, somebody always like you need to believe in yourself, but. It your skill me. is a one out of a ten. Good luck with believing in yourself. I mean, it's, right? you know, it, it, it's it's so funny because I laugh at the stories and I you know I laugh at them and I cry at them. <laughs> the ones that you you see, this guy this guy from I think it was Nigeria just graduated from USC mm -hmm. with his doctorate. Like I mean, he came here to get a kidney transplant at USC. Ended up going to school at USC, and now is the first black man to ever graduate from USC with a doctorate, and is running their their um research program for like and i was blown away mm -hmm. and he said you know they were doing an interview with him and he's there and he's like i just want everybody to believe you know dreams can come true and it's true it mm -hmm. as much as you want to laugh at that and go yeah okay you got to break you know it's true mm -hmm. persistence hustle and believe in yourself and anything can come true what about big break you may not be a billionaire you may not be the next producing the next hundred million dollar movie but you'll make it mm -hmm. right a big break yeah what about a big break or what if i'm breaks what if are some, great what if What's some of these what i'm just saying like I, I grew up in the midwest right i grew up on a farm yeah i didn't really have an outlet to really experience i don't even know personally how i mentally got to a place where i was like man 
how do you, how do you how, people that are watching this are going yeah but i don't have the opportunity or i don't have an in or i don't have like like what do you say to those folks what i say to that is that i was born and raised in los angeles california in hollywood i grew up on the set of happy days a show that maybe most of you don't know, but it was a very popular great show. show. It's a great show. It's a phenomenal <laughs> show. Yes. Gary Marshall, one of the biggest directors in the world. I mean, I, we had connections. I never had a big break. I hustled. I never there called upon favors from people that I knew. And, you know, I mean, and I still to this day have it. Um, it, it, it happens to you anywhere you're at. You so you make it. Until you make it. But you know mm -hmm. what? I think that kids these days or people these days have more outlets. You have the internet. You have access to things. If you hustle, you listen to stories where people will be like, I just emailed every single person I saw. Every single person I Googled. I just send emails until somebody answered me back. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Not that that's what I'm telling everybody to go do because then everybody up at the top is going to hate yeah. me for saying that. But it's true. There's a hustle. If you have a hustle, you'll make it. Yeah. You know? I mean, and that's what I truly believe in. Hustle, heart, yeah. persistence. And if you're not lazy, you can't be lazy. You have to want to get up and do it. Mm -hmm. No one's going to do it for you. Nope. Nope. But do you think if you, if people find like that thing, yeah, then it's pretty hard to be lazy? Or do you think people can be passionate and still be lazy? Oh, definitely. <laughs> 100%. You can find what you want. But like, I mean, when you say, oh, I want to do music. Well, if you're not doing music every day and you're not out singing at open mics and doing you're not going to get, no one's going to find you in your living room. I mean, well, that's untrue. <laughs> I, I think I coming right. from these yeah. days, I mean, you can put something online and become a superstar. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, but yeah, it's all about where you want to go. There's a million and one people that don't want to go on a talent show or a voice or a American Idol, you know, yeah. but they want to be, they want to make it in the, in the industry. Right, right, right. And social media actually gives them a leg up these days. Yes. I mean, you know, you know, to get a, to get seen or to get exposure or whatever. That's crazy because yeah. we didn't have that we didn't growing have up. That. I didn't have yeah. that. We didn't have that. I look at it and go, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, there's a florist like in the middle of Michigan, but because he's got 200 million followers because he sits on his porch every day and has all the time in the world to make a different flower arrangement, he's getting asked by somebody, some major corporation to come and do their event because they want his name attached. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because they think that his million, two million followers is going to boost their company. Yep. Yep. Crazy! Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Drives me I nuts. Love I love it. Drives me nuts. I love it. You know, but here we are, you know, let's take over. Show these little ones that, you know, <laughs> the old guys can catch up. If we wanted to close it up though. Yes. Because I don't want to bore everybody. No. We no, probably, we probably, awesome. we probably well, already I've, did. I've been mainly like <laughs> listening because uh, it's just, do you, you got a lot of insight. Oh, thanks. Because when you, when you start again, you didn't have, a break or nope. a family member going here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you our our director of floral stuff at this yeah. big. That happens, by the way, all the time, all the time. And then that person gets what exposed. Yep. So I'm just sitting here listening to you guys, and and he's he's had the same exact career path. I've watched him. You know, he's been my best friend since we were in college, and he went where do you start? Production assistant. Yep. Running around getting coffees and bagels for everybody. Yeah, man. And now he's a I big think, time producer. But I, th I, think, yeah. I think that's what we're going to realize. The more and more we talk to successful people, the more we're going to see people started from the bottom. They weren't handed it, you know? I mean, there are people out there that were, you know, yeah. but they also but started from the bottom. They start from gonna the bottom. You're going to hear stories where, you know, their dad was the CEO or the president of Paramount Pictures. Yeah. But you know what? They didn't want to follow their, they didn't want to be called the president's yep. son. So Changed they started. They want to be in the industry, so they started with coffees and bagels. Right, right, right. And made it up, you know? That's right. Now, that's that's, that's admirable because then 100%. you're like, you might be the president's son, but you started off at the bottom. And then when you got up to the respectable level, oh, yeah, then use your name all you want. You know, and I believe in that. I mean, sure. but it's also staying power, like you're speaking about. Yeah. You know, when you start from the bottom, regardless if you follow footsteps, you don't follow footsteps, you blaze your own trail. Yeah. It, 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 it's staying power. There's staying power there. Yeah. So, I well, love the staircase analogy. It was yeah, great, right? It's good. Just stay I, humble. It sticks and with it me for the, my whole grateful. life. All my whole life. All it that, yeah. yeah. I love it. it I got definitely. a lot of nuggets. <laughs> I got a lot of nuggets today. Yeah. yeah, I hope they did too. Yeah. I, I, hope, people, I, people, I hope people take away some of these things and, and, and implement them into their own lives. And, uh, you know, I Agreed. thoroughly really appreciate you sitting down with us. Thank you. I and would love being here. I hope that and everyone. I'll come back. Perfect. I like it. I can make up another story. Done. <laughs> Done. I love it. I love it. That's I awesome. love it. Well, 
I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Do you have any last things you want to like share that we maybe missed? Or? I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I just want to tell everybody out there, just like I said before, you know, stay humble, hustle, mm-hmm. and love yourself and yeah. love others. And be, you know, and you'll, be, you'll come up. And you know what? Making millions of dollars isn't what means you made it. Mm-hmm. With that said, I don't no. have anything more. Do you have anything more? Or is that a... No, I mean, if if he wants to plug his social media and tell everybody, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you can go to <laughs> at Flaming Florist on Instagram. Flaming Flower Productions is my company. Um, I'm not big on social media. I'm finding out that now is the time to start doing it. I think that I wasn't ready at back when it started or... In the past years, I mean, I just haven't been ready. It's not something my brain works. You know, people's brains work differently, and I don't know how. I do put, do jobs, and I go on to edit the photo and put it on, post it, and before I hit post, I hit cancel. Oh, no. Because oh, I'm yeah. just I'm too yeah. petrified. So yeah. I'm getting up there. You'll see me all over the place. Keep watching for me, Justin Howard, Flaming mm-hmm. Flores, Flaming Flower Productions. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you yeah. for being here, and uh, we'll have you back. Peace. Peace. You didn't tell us, though. You didn't tell us what? Oh. You opened the shows. Do I have to close it? Yeah. Oh, I shit. Mean, oh, shoot. Here, edit that in. Go yeah, ahead. Go. Actually, we don't have to edit. This is like the good stuff. Wait, one more thing. Did you want to uh, reference any big projects that coming up? Nope. All good? Nope. Keep Low that pro? Yep, yep. On the DL. I love it. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, Born Broke with Mike Hoforth. And thank you, Justin Howard. Thanks, guys. That's not how we end the show, though. <laughs> okay. Let's forgot do how, we end, how do we end the show? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>